With me today is my beautiful model, Alexandra. You might guys, you might hear me call her Allie or Alex during this shoot. She is one of my favorite people, one of my best friends, and one of the best guests you could ever have. She's excited to be here today. Today we're going to be covering the fundamentals of hairstyling, which include your tools, your products, we have all of them lined up for you, as well as what your client needs. So it's not always about what you need to get done, but it really is what's going to fit best for your client. Um, as we jump into the blow dry, you're going to get to see all the different tools and products we're working with. Today's dryer is going to be the Nano Dryer, which is brand new for us guys. If you haven't tried it out yet, it's a really good one. Under two pounds, under one pound, I'm sorry. So it does help me to kind of be able to work faster, but also more ergonomic. I've already sectioned her and I've pre-done some of the back sections in her hair. And you can kind of see, this is what you should expect while you're setting your blow dry. So for the blowout, I actually use a bunch of different little tips and tricks and tools. Some of my favorite being these double prong clips, which you can see right over here. These are gonna be a great tool. So you normally see those with wet setting, but I'm gonna use them this time to actually blow dry her. So we're gonna jump in. I know there's a lot of opportunities for questions. So if you guys have any, please feel free to jump in. Um, it's never an interruption. Let's get started. I am gonna take down one of Allie's back sections and I'm just gonna divide it right into two. So you can see right here, we're gonna do a clean section. Clean sections make for easy work. Allie's color is gonna be showing beautifully through this entire process. We've already prepped the hair with the infra shampoo and the infra treatment conditioner. And then I actually jumped in and I used the styling guard. So this is gonna be turning on, so you guys are gonna be able to hear it a little bit, but don't let that deter you. I'll still answer the questions. Alrighty, so I actually start with polishing my ends. Mainly because she does have longer hair. Most of my clients that are coming in for blowouts or blow dries um, just weekly, it's because they don't have as much time to handle their own hair, so what better than a professional? Um, as your client or as your guest, what's really interesting to see is how many people come in and they're still doing work in, like, in your chair. They're working, they're on their laptops. Allie is actually, uh, she works for a builder, so she's constantly drawing contracts and doing all kinds of things. Um, I actually am gonna jump right to the base. What's really fun about a blowout is I need all that volume right here from the base, right? So I'm gonna pull the hair up, a little bit of tension, and just dry right down at the base. We'll come through. I do a lot of passes because the more I dry the hair and the more I heat it up, the more shine it gets. Can you see that? It's pretty neat. Allie's formulation, um, she actually, she just came in recently and she wanted a change, so we did a little bit of a low light. This is a great section to really check out that low light. This is a 506W mixed with a 6RV. We wanted a little bit of a violet brown because she does really like to have pinky blondes as well. It's her like rebellion, you know? It's her creative side. Okay, so once I actually finish with um, the section blow drying, what I wanna do is pin it. So I'm gonna use those double prong wet clips. These wet set clips. Now you can use the single prong like for your pin curls, um, but I actually prefer to use this one. It gives me a little bit more hold, a little more strength. And I'm gonna start from the top and I'm gonna cut the hair and just begin to roll it. Tucking in, no fishtails, we don't want those. And I'll pin on both sides for extra stability. This just helps the hair cool in this shape. A lot of people, you'll see it on Instagram, you'll see it a lot on um, a lot of the online platforms, people are using the, the detachable brushes, which is really a lot of fun because you can just leave, it's basically you'll roll it up and then you just unhook it and you leave the brush there. It's really a cool tip um, and a cool, cool trick. I'm gonna spray a little bit of my volume booster right at her base, right through the top of her crown. So this is the parietal ridge of the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my volume booster just right in there. Again, we'll start at the ends. Notice my elbow, my arms might be up, but my elbows are not crossing my heart. I do need a little bit of a different angle for this. And I like to use 
my blow dryer as my second hand because obviously it's taken. Uh, something really cool about chapter eight, I was, you know, as I was preparing for this and as I was kind of, um, you know, going through the motions of, of getting this together, I was interested to really read that chapter eight includes the history of hairstyling, which is so cool. So it actually tells you all about the Romans and you get a little bit of a highlight on the Middle Ages as well. Um, back in the Roman times, you definitely see a lot of curls and a lot of really big darker curls specifically living right in the top area of this head. So they would put all of their curls right up top. Um, it was a big statement. And then as we move through the Middle Ages, you start to see a lot, a lot, a lot, guys, of braids. And those braids kind of live at the parietal or below, or above, I'm sorry, above. And it's a nice change. But then as you move into, like if I were to say bouffant or beehive, you guys know what I'm talking about. You already know, you already know the era. Allie knows it. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to forget where all of those big styles came from. And I think what's really interesting now is that you're seeing different styling. So wet styling was popular too. So, you know, after the Middle Ages, after the bouffant, after the beehive, uh, we started seeing longer hair. So women started growing their hair longer because they didn't really need to maintain anything. Um, so what became a lot more needed was good haircuts and good hair colors. And so we really do, you know, as hairdressers, we are picking the right blowout for our clients, you know, this is for them. It's not for us. Um, a lot of the times you, we kind of forget the basics. So the basic of your blowout is gonna be what? Your consultation, right? I think the consultation is skipped quite a bit. And I don't think it's meant to be. Um, it's just that we forget. But a cleaner consultation is the end result to a great appointment and a lifelong client. So definitely even with your blowouts, keep in mind your consultation is so, so important. Once again, we're gonna spray that volume boost right at the base. See how clean that line is? We'll start polishing the ends again. And as we get higher in the head, you'll get to see more of Allie's highlights as well. Her highlight formula was an, a nine eye. She pulls with a very beautiful copper but I didn't want to take out all of the copper because I needed some of it to stay natural looking. Being that she is a salon, like she is a professional and I'm in the salon, you know, I can have all these crazy hot pink hair, but Allie can't. So Allie opts for kind of like a whisper of pink. She has a nine eye and eight RV glaze. We only leave it on for about 10 minutes. Just about 10 minutes. Again, watch as I'm polishing here. I'm gonna use my dryer, I'm gonna use the nozzle just to pull that hair up. The better you set this blow dry, the better it's gonna look and the longer it's gonna live. Um, something else that you'll notice if you've read, if you've read chapter eight or you, know, you should be reading it now is that uh, time is kind of, that's what decides everything. So how much time do you actually have in the morning? Allie, she doesn't have much. She pre-makes her smoothies at night so she can just eat them in the morning. Like she's definitely one of our blowout clients. She's somebody that is, has a busy lifestyle. Um, something that's really pertinent in the book or in the, I'm sorry, in chapter eight is that they're talking to you about how much women change their hairstyles based on fashion and how busy they are. Like we are really a community focused on being busy. And as women, we're trying to do everything. We're trying to do it all, but it's no different than men. Men with long hair, think about that. You can talk them into blow up. I would, that'd be great. Ease their lifestyle a little bit. Once we moved past the seventies, you know, haircuts were so important in the seventies because clients were doing a lot more styling at home. So they needed a really solid cut, you know, to make that styling easier. And so when you think about, say you think about Farrah Fawcett, I mean, how much of a pillar in the hair community is she? I don't think she even intended to be, 
but she came out with these big layers in the front and and man they were beautiful and they were always polished and they were always shined blowouts are a girl's best friend if you don't have time though to set your blow dry i do recommend using your cool shot button it is there for a reason guys it really does help you out just to set the style and i'll place it here i'll even roll up on the brush and cool the base a little because if you don't have time with setting i know it does take a few extra seconds i mean it's worth it but a lot of people say oh i'm too busy for that i just round brush like do what you do but this blowout is going to be pinned and it's going to last about four days longer so if you still don't have your clips no big deal all I'm going to do is roll out and polish that end. And you're going to start to notice how big that body is and that, that wave that it's kind of forming at the bottom. For the sake of this video, I am going to pin it. But um, here we go. Beautiful. Once we moved past like the 70s and into the 80s, you know, big hair was big, y'all. It was something that was so sought after to have all of that hair that people started cutting all the way to their crown bangs so they could have all that body and all that volume. Uh, my mother's wedding photos, I always think about that when I think about the 80s because she really did it up. My mother was a hairdresser as well. So I, <laughs> I definitely go back through and I see all those bangs and all that big hair and it reminds me of how she had her hair at her wedding. I am going to be in this back section over here. I'll show you guys in just a sec. Let me get this parting nice and clean. Um, general rule of thumb is any tool you're working with, make sure that your brush isn't any bigger than the section. So I'm actually going to be switching. I am using the round brushes um, from Chi. We do love these. They do have the Chi technology in them. The cationic hydration interlink, really important when keeping moisture in the hair. And because my section is a little big, I'm going to just split it right down the middle so you guys can, can check it out. So rule of thumb, okay? If your brush is this big, so is your section. Same thing with your curling irons, with you know, everything that you're using. And we're going to polish those ends once again. Now, and I hear there's a lot of you watching, so I really do appreciate you tuning in. We're having a lot of fun, you know, creating all of these webinars for you guys, and we hope that, you know, to turn, like, the monotony of having to read a book into something that you actually enjoy. Um, I think we as hairdressers are so vocal, and we're so movable, and we're so hyper, most of us, anyway, that we have to stand up. I find myself in all classes being like, can I stand at the back? Again, I'm going through. You guys can see everything. I'm moving that hair up. Just going to heat it up because I don't want to really dig too deep into her scalp with the brush. I know I'll catch some hairs if I do that. What do you guys think of this color? Oh my gosh. Look at that shine. You can see some of that pink blonde just kind of popping in there. gonna look amazing as we move through kind of the decades and and all the different like areas I'm sorry areas eras of styling we see so many different patterns and right now what we're really what we're gonna be seeing is more people coming in for their blowouts it was really popular about five years ago it had just started blow dry bars and you know all kind of dry styling bars were really kicking up and now people have kind of forgotten that regular salons can do blowouts. I think it's something that, you know, as, as a professional, even Allie was shocked. <laughs> she was like, hey, there's a blow dry bar up the street that I'm going to. And I was like, Allie, I do those. And she was like, oh, really? Because people think, oh, you're in a salon, you do color, you do cuts. Uh, you probably don't just like blow out, right? No, just no blow dries. Um, I think she kind of laughed at herself when she heard that because she was like, Oh, you mean I've been going somewhere else this whole time? Uh, shocker, it's me. I can do this. Now, this Chi Nano Dryer comes with two attachments. Uh, this one is great. This is the concentrator. 
great, 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 great for these smooth blowouts. But then you also have the comb attachment. I think it's a inch and three quarter comb length. Um, and it really does help as you're getting through the base. If you need to smooth out someone really curly, I have really curly hair. Um, my sisters do as well. So I, whenever I flat iron their hair, it's something that I find to be really vital. And we pre-sprayed all that volume spray in her hair, so she is just ready to go. All right. Something really interesting, uh, especially mentioned in Chapter 8, is how salons are becoming much more unisex. And I don't think I ever thought about that. I think I always thought that, you know, people knew they were accepted, like any kind of person is accepted in our salon. but. The reality comes down to, no, they don't know that. Because for so long, men would go to barbershops and women would go to salons. And men kind of scoffed at the idea that they could come into a salon and have their hair done. Um, I actually have about 37, I say about, I've already done the math, 37% male clientele base. Um, and that's just guys that sit with me every two to three weeks. I mean, that's kind of like unbelievable, but then women are also kind of crossing that boundary and moving into uh, moving into the barbershop as well. A lot of my clients that, you know, they like to have their sides shaved and things of that nature, they'll go into a barbershop and it's so easy for them to just get the sides nicked up and they walk right out. And unisex salons are such a big deal, uh, but I think that it's just about reiterating that, making everybody feel really comfortable. Um, which leads us back to the consultation. That is something that a lot of people take for granted. They don't utilize it as much as they should. I think even in beauty school, that was one of the biggest focuses we had. Like with Allie, when she first started coming to me, I was definitely, I, don't, I could definitely tell the type of person she was. I knew that, I knew that she needed, you know, she needed something really good quality. And so she's actually pushed me a lot in my industry, like as, as a service provider, to be able to provide what she needs. And this color was not something she would have ever gotten at first, like at all. So it's really funny to see how she's actually developed as a guest, as a customer um, of mine. I, people change if you give them the right consultation and you kind of open up their boundaries a little bit you're going to have a client for life if they trust you. And that's really important. And a friend for life. <laughs> so again here, guys, I'm up top. I'm now completely at the parietal ridge. I'm going to focus all of my air right at the base. And all of these guys are being pinned on base. On base, because I want as much volume as I can get and that's the best way to do it. If I wanted less volume, I would place it completely off base. Um, and then of course there's the option of, of half on base for 50% of that volume. Um, her coloring technique, I wanted to kind of touch on that because you guys are seeing a lot of her low light and a lot of her highlight at the same time. Um, I use on Ally what I call the teardrop method. I don't know if that's already been called a thing. If so, sorry. Um, <laughs> I use the teardrop method, and the actual point of her teardrop is down here at her nape. It's not at the top of her head where a lot of people would think. Um, I wanted the front to be really, really soft, and I found myself being able to, you know, kind of force my angles through the back of the nape easier than I would at the front of the head. Um, once the hair's down, you guys are going to really be able to see it, and it's going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Allie has some new layers that she's excited to show off. <laughs> Alrighty, there's that section. Let's go ahead and pin that one. If any of you have worked with a nano dryer before, um, you'll know how lightweight it is. It really does help you as a stylist. Allie actually bought it. She called me before Christmas. She was like, hey, I'm sending my mother-in-law to buy me this dryer. And I was like, the one I use? And she was like, uh, yeah. I have too much hair to be fussing around with it for too long. 
And that's true, a heavy dryer makes for a lot of work. I much, much prefer having something a little more lightweight because I am able to work you know, faster, cleaner. And honestly, guys, we ache. We ache a lot as hairdressers. And we wanna make sure that we are working ergonomically, but if something is eight pounds at the end of my hand, that's not working smarter. That's working way too hard, like much harder than I want to work, mainly because I want to keep my hands. A little more volume boost. Again, we did spray her beforehand, but I really do think it's important that you guys see where I'm placing this product, because you can place a volume booster everywhere. You really can. But with my heavier haired clients, ones that just have a ton of really good hair, um, placing it right there at the base is wonderful. Do we have any questions yet? We do? Okay. Were you trying to tell me that and I didn't hear? Okay. What's going on, Haley? Okay, so I, that's a great question. Uh, they asked what did I prep the hair with. So I actually used the shampoo, the Infra shampoo and the Infra treatment for the conditioner. We did leave the conditioner in three minutes um, as recommended. I really do think that's a step that a lot of people skip. Thank you for the question. for the blow dryer. So actually, that's a great question. What, what products work best with my blow dryer? Uh, anything chi. Because it's a chi dryer, all of these products are meant to heat up at a certain temperature and move into the hair underneath the cuticle and provide a lot of shine and a lot of body. So I can actually use any product I'd like. In this particular, this particular blow dry, I chose a lot of the infra, uh, the volume booster, the shine spray, uh, everything like that. So you'll get to see I think the products are even behind us, huh, Sam? Let's see. Oh, and then of course my straight guard. So I really do love my straight guard. A lot of people have moved away from using this because we have all these new, fancy, beautiful products coming out. But I really do believe in staples and that's gotta be one that I use in every blow dry. Makes it really smooth. Thank you for the question. Yeah. <laughs> She also bought that. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, if you just consult the right way and you treat your guests with as much respect as you're treated with, there is no end of the road. There really isn't. Now, keeping in mind that this dryer is super powerful, um, I really don't want this to heat up on her scalp. It is 850 watts. Um, it is a very powerful dryer. I mean one of the best I've ever used, if not the best. Um, to work more ergonomically rather than always being up here. This one is not pretty because you can see everything, but two, it's not good for your heart. So I like to drop and kind of come in from the front. Even if I have to pull to the side, I'd much rather do that. Look at that, guys. Do you see how the hair is kind of going into the brush? What's really important to notice about that is this ceramic center in the brush will add more shine. So it really is important to utilize your tools the correct way. And instead of just kind of going through the motions, really trying to study and see what's gonna make the difference in your blow dries. I think it took me a year and a half after school <laughs> to even learn how to blow dry. I had, don't get me wrong, I had great teachers, but I really was not, I wasn't blow drying the right way. I was kind of just going through the motions. Pin this one up as well. You can already see that bounce. Look at that, guys. You can already see that. Once again, I'm going to cup. It starts as a fold, but it turns into a roll. And if you can see through it, you know you're gonna have a really nice, held, bouncy wave. That's something we're looking for. I remember beauty school was a big time for a lot of people to come in and get blowouts. That was huge. Cosmetology school, big deal. I have this one section left at the top of her crown. This is usually how it ends. Go ahead and put your chin all the way up for Mel. So right here is going to be this last section right on the top. I'm going to do her in a middle part so you guys are really going to be able to see all the body that comes from the back of the head. A little more volume boost and her hair is getting a little bit dry so all I'm going to do is add a little bit more of my straight garden. 
and it's such a creamy consistency. It really looks a lot like the pliable polish, just in more of a liquid form. Um, it gives me a lot of control and a lot of ease because getting through long hair can sometimes be really difficult. There's two different types of brush that people, brushes that people generally use. Um, one being like a pin brush or you have the boar bristle brush. So the boar bristle brush looks just like this. So it normally has darker bristles because they're natural. There's some that have white. The thing about a boar bristle brush is it gives you so much tension. Like I'm hardly even holding this and it's holding onto her. The natural shine you get from a boar bristle brush, honestly, is unmatchable. If I had detachable brushes with boar bristle, you can bet I'd be using them every day. And I'm going to go in and shoot right at the crown. I used to have a lot of trouble with fish hooks. You guys know what that is? It's like Every time your teacher or your elder stylist comes around like us and says, get rid of that fish hook. It's like that little 90 degree angle that the ends of your curls take um, if you don't complete the actual set. So here, what I'm actually doing is rolling up and up in order to not have those fish hooks. I roll up and up so that all those ends start to feel more comfortable curling. And that's basically what you're doing is prepping the hair to have a little bit of that wave. That wave makes everything more cohesive and it makes it more simple. All right. As far as trends as we're gonna be see, like we're gonna see coming up, I really do think we're gonna see a lot more people doing their own blowouts, which one would make me really sad because it's something I love. But then two, it would mean that we have to come up with better products and better ways, and we need to teach our guests a lot better than we've been doing. Because so many people come to me and what do they say? Uh, and they probably say it to you too. I can never do my hair like you can. Allie says it, I can never do it like you. Of course she can, she just doesn't have the right teaching. I failed her in the past as a teacher. So you know, while I, I enjoy educating other hairdressers, the root of it all is that I have to educate my guests. And I'm gonna cool shot up here just a little bit, turning right here. I could either turn this all the way to cool down here, or I can hit this button. Either way, I'm gonna get a drop in temperature, and it's gonna help seal that cuticle even more. Check this out. How beautiful is that shine, guys? It's looking nice. We're gonna move to the front sections. Normally what takes the bulk of your time with blow drying is gonna be the back sections. It's where most of our hair length is held, especially in somebody that has layers. Um, but you also will find that hair tends to be a little bit thinner in the front, um, whether it be just from genetics, it could be hereditary, or it could be just because like me, I wear a lot of hats, a lot of hats. And I know that's a bad thing as a hairdresser to wear a lot of hats. But, you know, we work out, we go to the gym, we sweat. We need a little bit of something to kind of hold these baby hairs out of the way. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I'm actually going to change, I'm going to change Al's parts real quick. Put your chin up for me, man. See, this part is going to be really important because I want to make sure that it's even because I've never, I've never had a client leave with a crooked part and be excited about it. So we wanna make sure everything's even. Now the best way to do this is gonna be with one of your carbon combs. You see this has a pick side where you can actually part the hair really easily. Um, you could use this side if you'd like, but this is what it's made for. I'm actually gonna look down her nose and I'm gonna draw it back. I can also see kind of where her hair changes right through the hairline. We have a lot, of, a lot of people with a lot of different parts and a lot of different growth patterns, you guys. This is the best way to kind of fight through those. Beautiful. And again, a little bit more straight guard. 
Not too much. You can see that's not a lot. I'm going to run it through the ends because I don't want her to dry out. And don't be afraid to put product near the hairline. So many times that's what is missing when you polish your hairstyle. It's going to be just a little bit right here. And again, we're just going to tighten this side up and let it sit for just a second. I like to kind of wrap, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I like to kind of wrap my section around my clip because I don't like it to be messy or poking them in the face. <laughs> Once again, check those ends, make sure it's saturated. The worst thing you can do is start drying somebody and leave it half dry. I've done it before because I was <laughs> like a beginner and I thought, oh, I can get away with it. But the truth was I couldn't. Um, and my styles were falling, and I didn't know why. And it's because I was dropping the ball. Again, I'm gonna do nice straight sections right through here. I'm gonna push a little bit. And I'm just gonna lay this hair onto the other section. I don't want wet hair affecting what I've already done. I'm gonna go through and polish the ends again. And here you're gonna notice because she has layers, I'm gonna start pulling the hair forward. Uh, it just helps that I can get all of the hair on the brush at the same time. Once again, pull the hair up and shoot right through there at the base just to get some heat going. And really cranking it out because otherwise you do end up with a lot of frizz that you don't want to see. You don't need to over dry the hair. What's really interesting and what's important, what we were kind of started on, um, you know, as a hairdressing company for hairdressers, made by hairdressers, what's really cool is that our blow dryers have infrared technology in them. Most of them, this one actually has a blue light tech, but uh, the infrared technology is important because rather than drying the hair from the outside in and creating a ton of frizz, we're drying the hair from the inside out. So we're pulling all of that water out rather than kind of well, cooking, you know, I don't want to cook any of the hair that, that I have. I don't want anybody's hair to be dry. And the best way to ensure that is I use my tea tools and I dry them properly. Once again, because we're in the front, I am going to cool shot. So you can flip your switch down or you can just press the button. And I'll start at the ends just like I did. I always go ends and then I go right to the base. Uh, most things in between get dried you know, inherently, it's just, it's part of rolling it up. So you can already see the bounce coming from the ends. I'm gonna cool shot her right at the base. And I'll even start to move a little bit forward and check out that shine. It's lovely. We'll go through and we'll pin that. The pin's important, don't forget. We're gonna hold it up because we want that coming straight up from the base for max volume because I want this to land on base. So we'll go here, curl the ends, and just gather all of the hair as you come through. I'm just gonna secure it nice and tight. It doesn't pull her hair, but it does, it does stay nice and secure. Um, I want her to be able to kind of turn her head and none of this is going to fall out. Because let's be honest, clients move their heads all the time. We're people, we're humans, we got to move. I'm going to save this top section to go straight back. So I'm going to start to clip this down. Once again, brush is this big, sections this big. It just keeps it so it's easier to blow dry. If I'm taking on too much, it's kind of like when you use a curling iron and people are like, I'm gonna get my hair stuck. Only if they're using way too big of a section. Let's jump onto those ends. And you can really see Allie's hair lights, hair lights, highlights. <laughs> Just popping right through the front. This is where the end of that teardrop is. So 
that more that supple, the round part of the teardrop lives up here. So she has a much softer blend. When I met Ali, she would have never tried a middle part. Um, once again, she's got to talk him into it. No, I'm just kidding. But you do have to build that trust, and the trust is kind of the most important part. So I'm really cranking out the base, pulling it all the way through the ends. Now, as somebody who's tender-headed like Ali, this shouldn't feel like I'm pulling. It should feel like there's tension. So if you're pulling, you've got too much hair. Um, something I used to do when I would practice, I would practice on my sisters who have too much hair, but I would always work on them, and they're so tender-headed, I would know immediately if I was doing something that they didn't like. It just wouldn't work that way. Again, I'm cool shotting. This time I'm just using the button. And I'm going to polish the ends, polish, polish. Um, something that we say in the salon that, that I work for, we always say, do most of your editing before you take the photo. This is part of that. You can't just edit good hair onto people. Uh, you know, all these photos that you see coming out, all of these, you know, post-webinar or, you know, pre-hair show, before we go on stage, things like that. Most of the editing is done before the photo is taken. And that's so important to remember, especially in a social media age like we have. Um, you know, it's not all perfect, but I can get it pretty darn close. Again, I'm just going to leave this in the brush until I come back with my clips. Anything else, Haley? Yeah? See, guys, I'm just going to pull right up to the bend, cut the hair, and just let it kind of roll itself down. Actually, that's a great question. I I don't know what the temperature is. I, you know what, let us, let us look that up. We'll inform you after the video is done, and that way, that's an awesome question. That way I don't give you anything false. I, would, I don't want to lie to you guys. We're just becoming friends. So as, okay, that's a great question. Why do I prefer the Nano over other dryers? Um, well, to be quite frank, I like all the dryers that we have. I just think I move along as, as technology progresses, so do the tools that I have. Um, so something I'm really enjoying is having a lighter weight dryer because I still have, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still have my Rocket, I still have my Pro, I still have um, my Touch 2, I have my Touch 1. I have all of these dryers that, that I love, except, I don't know, this one came out, it was lightweight and it worked better for me you know, at the age of hairdressing I'm in, I'm, I've been in now for, what, six years. So this is, I'm still technically kind of new. Um, but I like to progress my tools as I progress in the industry. And come on, lightweight. Uh, something that's really cool, though, about the Nano is that there's this blue light. And I don't think I can show you guys. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but there is a blue light on this dryer that is actually called Rapid Clean Technology. And a rapid clean technology means I never have to take this bad boy apart to clean it. It's cleaning itself while I'm working. Um, there are two separate turbines that are in it, and they're running forward. So they're pushing all of that air straight forward. Um, something that is really neat about that, though, is we also have a white light in it as well. So we're keeping everything clean, everything sanitized. Sanitary is the word when it comes to hair dressing. Um, and a lot of people don't think that their dryers are dirty. And then all of a sudden they start smelling like burnt hair. So I like to stay away from that. So naturally the Nano is my go-to, I guess. <laughs> what else, Haley? Uh, can I spray the volume boost throughout the entire head without just doing section per section? You can. One thing I don't, I don't do that though for myself personally, because if I'm going through a really long blowout, it might take me a while to get to the top of her crown. And what's actually gonna end up happening is it's gonna dry out a little bit. And not only does it lose a little bit of its effectiveness, um, but I find that it's already dry. So it's, it's not working for me. I love to use it while it's fresh, but I do have clients that have less hair and less hair would be a great one to use that on. So again, this is probably a great angle for you guys to see this. I'm gonna take it up 
if you were doing pin curls, this would be the stem, right? So I'm going to just let this fall right there. And I'll start to curl, curl, curl all that hair in. And it leaves it beautifully woven. That was a great question, though. We're moving on to these last sections up front. And yes, I'm putting Volume Booster in it because why not? We want a big voluminous blowout and the best way to get it is by utilizing your product. One thing I think we forget uh, while we're styling hair, and this, I do this too. It's not, you know, it's not just pointing fingers. We all do it. We forget that we have to tell our clients what we're using. Uh, connecting with your guests is so important. And they're your guests, they're not just your client. Clients are people who just come in and pay. Uh, she's paying for something and it's not just gonna be products. She's gonna pay for an experience and it's gonna be educational. Um, you know, why am I using what I'm using? Because she's gonna go home and she's gonna come back next time and say the exact same thing. I really can't do it the way you do it. So if I tell her, I totally understand, Allie, let me grab the products for you and see if you have a better time trying it at home. And you can start to see right here this teardrop coming together where it's softening at the point. Turn your head for me. Perfect. It's softening right at the point. And I'm just picking up that hair. And by, by blow drying like 45 degrees from her angle, that's where I'm going to land off, like completely on base so that I get max volume from her blowout. This is actually how I do her blowouts in the salon. Um, this is how I do any of my thick haired clients blowouts. Setting is so important. Uh, I don't want all this work to be for naught and I want them to leave and two days later still be taking selfies that I can post a fire emoji on, you know? Um, another thing with your consults, guys, your profiles online are amazing. All of ours are. We have to up it, we have to keep it going. And what's so nice about having kind of a one-click portfolio is that I can come to Allie and say, Allie, we did this color, do you remember this? It says on here it was October 13th, 2015. How do you still feel about that? And she says, oh my God, that's the color I love the most. Boom, let's go back to it. It's so nice to be able to just have everything we need at our fingertips. Let's pull this. And then guys, we only have a couple more sections. If you have any questions, ask them anytime. Um, I know we're going to cover some of them at the end. And then once we actually finish the blow dry, we get to shoot with the wonderful Muhammad. And he will showcase, he will showcase all of this work as he does beautifully. Look at that. Oh, Allie, you're an angel. OK, so now I just have her front sections. You guys can see it right in here. You can see how much hair. I'll look down for me so they can kind of see this parting. So you see right over here, running just above the parietal ridge, parietal sitting about here, just above the parietal in both sections. And I have a little bit of a fallout as you guys can see. If this happens, this is a great example. So if this does happen to you, if you have one that just kind of falls out, all I like to do is unclip it and reclip it because this hair is already trying to set itself. So it won't take a whole lot of work. Just comb it out, let it drop, and roll it in. I used to do this thing where whenever I would do these blow dries, um, I used to start at the top, actually, and I still believe in doing that. Don't ever, you know, don't let me tell you this is the only way you can do a blowout, because it's not true. But I used to start from the top in this section that I'm at now. Um, and I think that's such a fun way to do it. The only reason I didn't do it that way is because I did want to have some of this done for you guys. Uh, but Allie and I kind of go back and forth for her blowouts and for her blow dries, like what's going to work the best for me that day? Do I have a backache? Do I need to warm up? <laughs> do I need, you know, have I not been working ergonomically enough to really be able to work longer hours? Again, okay guys, I'm going to start at the bottom. Oh, I'm going to turn you just a bit. There we go. 
what's really nice is you can tell that this was a very accurate teardrop color because as I'm, as I'm finishing up this drying right here, what you're gonna notice is the two low lights, the, six, the 506W and the 6RV, right out here on the ends. I did one part, 506W, to half a part 6RV, and I only let it process for about 20 minutes. Um, I wanted a little bit more than demi, but not as much as permanent, if that makes sense. You know, use your, your professional discretion when it comes to any of that. Uh, this is a really neat way to blow dry. A lot of people think that they have to go over every time. I'm actually gonna go under because I don't wanna work behind her. Um, so as I'm kind of pulling this through, you'll notice it's basically everything I've been doing just opposite. So I'm gonna drop the hair over the end of the nozzle and I'm gonna flip this way. Look at how easy that glides. It's like butter, y'all. And this will still keep me in the same directionality as everything else flowing away from the face for a big, beautiful blowout. I will go behind her just to prime, sorry guys, right at the, right at the base because I do want to make sure everything's dry in there. Allie, this is going to look wonderful. And now, Allie's not going to have to do her hair for like five days, guys. That's what a proper blowout should be. All they need is a little bit of dry shampoo. The best products to sell your guests, because this is about what they need, right? Does she have fine hair? Does she have gray hair? She has gray hair, she rose hip, easy. That dry shampoo is so good, it practically sells itself. Alrighty, let's go ahead and pin this one. But for Allie, actually, Allie has used the rose hip for a while, and then, are you using the Infratexture now? Is that the one? Red and gray can? Yeah. yeah. So she is using the Infratexture dry shampoo now. Once upon a time, that was just an extension line, but, but now it's a zone. We have one more section. And see guys, so we're still keeping the same width of section. Everything's still the same. Right here, you're really gonna see her highlight pop right here at the front. So while it's soft, it still meets the front of her hair. A little bit more, little bit more straight guard right through the ends. If you guys do any blowouts after this, if you found any of this helpful, feel free, tag me in the post, tag Farouk in the post. We wanna see it, you know, we wanna know that, that you guys are using these tools and that you're loving them because I really love them and maybe I'm just, I don't know, I'm not the only one, I know that. <laughs> so I'm gonna start overhand just a little bit at the base, or I'm sorry, at the ends. Just to get them nice and crisp. As those ends dry, it's gonna create less weight holding onto the top, so I'm getting more body up here and less drag from all the weight. Okay, and now maximum blonde at the front. Go ahead and put your head up, Al. Perfect. Isn't she beautiful, guys? Oh my gosh. She's like a little angel just sitting here. Like a little angel. This blonde is so beautiful. I wish you guys could see it. I know Mohammed's gonna capture it in the photos, but oh man. If there was ever a rosé all day, this is it. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk about having wine on here? Probably not. Stay in school. <laughs> all right, and again, I'm gonna polish the ends. So if you're working up here, you can now drop down here. I'm just gonna pull right in front of her face. Guys, this is polishing. So we're switching to the cool shot. Polishing the ends first, less work later. Okay, and back down for me a little bit, Al. Perfect. Asking your client to move is perfectly okay. Um, as I think as 
as a client in a nail salon, <laughs> I always like ask my lady, oh, let me move. Can I move? Do you need me to move? The important part of that is that you're doing this 40, 50, 60 hours a week, maybe 70 if you're crazy, but you are working all week long. You need a little bit of help here and there and having them move a little bit, it's not gonna kill them. They actually don't mind helping. <laughs> At least that's what I learned. All righty, here's our last section, guys. And it already looks so bouncy and so beautiful. We'll pin it up, don't forget, we're at the stem. We're gonna curl it under. And we're just gonna set it right where it wants to live on base. As she's setting, I'm just gonna spray a tidbit of hairspray, not too much yet. Um, what's really great though is if I did spray too much, this is the infra texture, so it is brushable. Just to get all these hairs out of her face. She's one of those that like gets tickled super easy. So. <laughs> and look at that set, guys. As we start to kind of look through it, we can still see all of the sections. You see we have a little bit hanging out right here. All I would do with this is just pin it back underneath and set it inside of that cylinder. So it does, you know, it does help to remain organized when doing your blowouts because they come out that much better. Haley, did you have any more questions? Yes, absolutely. So our products were made with everybody in mind and they're really incredibly hydrating. Uh, as I said earlier, I have really curly hair and I know it's not as curly as most people that have more of a coiled texture, but I do have, I think I actually measured it. It's a two, no three, it's a three B. I have a lot of curl. So getting this really straight is difficult <laughs> to say the least, but I did use the infra texture this morning just to kind of hold it up a little bit more but I start with moisture first. So using your straight guard is gonna add a ton of moisture to your style, but then also the shine fusion. Uh, the shine infusion is a great spray to add on afterwards. So if I were, say my hair's looking a little dry, but I know it's not, I've put all the moisture in I can. All I'm gonna do is spray just a little bit and it's gonna add just that extra shine. Um, great for African American hair, great for my hair, great for Indian hair. It's all hair, it just has a different texture. Thank you for the question. We're just letting Allie cool right now. So I just need, I need this to cool off just a little bit. So by the time I'm usually done with the front, I'll start taking out the back. So why don't we check that out? When taking out my curls, I use my shine infusion and I spray it on my hands. I've learned so many like ways to use these products over the years, um, but this has gotta be one of my favorites. And I'll just run it very lightly. Have these two pieces right in the nape. Most of the time when you pin these curls, they kind of have a mind of their own, like they know where they're gonna go. But you can have a little more control over that and the directionality of how you actually um, pin them up. And I will spray hairspray on every section as it comes down. you'll start to see her color kind of unfold. We are really excited about this new color. It is brand new for her, so it's kind of exciting to see everything it'll look like. All right. Sorry. Ah. I always have those clients that get clips stuck on their hair because I'm human. I'm human. I do the most I can, but, or if you ask any of my colleagues here, I just do the most. Is that a bad thing anymore? I don't know. Now you can already see the volume spray starting to activate right here in the base. I really love that. The artistry of hairstyling. I mean, this is a great chapter, guys. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope you really take all of the lessons that you get to learn from cosmetology school, from trainings, from anything. If you're just, just watching just to watch, I hope that you take something from this that Maybe you can use for yourself or even just for your friends. As a kid, as a teenager, I was always styling other people's hair. And I think even to this day, I'd much rather do someone else's hair than my own, which might be why I'm a hairdresser. All 
you're ready. So we've covered our tools today, guys. We covered all of the fundamentals of hairdressing that you need. So your consultation, um, what your client truly needs versus what you think they just need to buy. And then as well, sorry, the products. I'm really excited to brush this out. They always end up so much softer and like defined than you think they will. I think that was something that scared me about blowouts for a long time. So don't be afraid to try something new. If these products are kind of foreign to you, give them a shot because you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, I do get stuck in my ways. So it is nice to work in a salon where people kind of remind me like, hey, try something different. <laughs> You've worn the same shoes for a year, that kind of thing. <laughs> True statement. True statement. <laughs> And we are on to our last few sections. I'm going to leave these last two for just a minute. Just make sure they're nice and cool. While I throw clips at Hallie. <laughs> Alrighty, these two are going to stay sitting. You'll often see me, if you ever see me in the salon, which you probably won't, but if you do, this is something that my clients look like a lot before they leave because I know their blow dries are going to be nice, but these top two sections, I pretty much leave those in until they leave, like right until they leave. And I'm going to use just a light coating of the infratexture. And once I get her kind of brushed out and really in the style, you're going to be able to see kind of where the waves move and where they they decide to stay. I'm going to use a little bit of a teasing comb. This is going to be another uh, tool that you're going to touch on in, in uh, chapter eight. So there's such things as back combing combs, teasing combs, and then I think back brushing. So we're going to do a back brushing technique. Back combing or teasing is really, really working this for a base, like say for an up style. However, in this case, all I need to do is brush just a little bit. So I'm going to hold at that 45 degree angle out and I'm going to let the hair tease just slightly. We're not going to make a cushion. And I'm going to work my way down. You see my sections are already kind of dividing themselves. So I want to make sure to respect them, but also utilize them. Because Allie has big hair, I'm going to go all the way down to her occipital. and see those start to form. But if I wanted to brush this out, it would come right out. That is the importance in back brushing and not teasing. Alrighty. Um, something that, that I read in chapter eight, which you guys are reading, is going to be a lot about, they referenced back to chapter seven. And chapter seven, if you remember, was about the face shape and how to decide what to do for your client because of the shape of their head or the shape of their face. With Allie, she has a long, slender face and she has a really beautiful nose. So I chose a middle part because it really does add a little bit more, um, well, it showcases her really, really well. But so does the color. So I do a little bit of that. I'm going to do a little more right here. And you'll notice when I let it fall, I'm putting my thumb underneath it. Just gives it kind of a resting place. Again, through the front. Now, because Allie does have those shorter layers in the front, I want to pull these backward, so at a 45 degree angle back, to do my back combing, because I want it to sit a little up right in the front of her face. And for any of you that go to like hair shows or things like that, or if you're interested in them, this is something we do backstage all the time, and it's really fun to get to kind of watch that. So if you're ever there, come find us. Alrighty. I'm going to switch over to these sides, and then we'll move on to the top. Time 
is actually what's going to decide everything that your clients can have done. So when they do come in and they say, I'm really low maintenance, but I want extensions, <laughs> it might not actually be the best choice for them, right? So we have to make sure that at the same time that we're paying attention to what the client needs, we're also paying attention to what is realistic for them. So make sure your consultations are spot on, guys. We have like a three-page consultation sheet that we use at our salon, but I tell you what, it comes out amazing every single time because we have you know, a platform to really ask all the questions that maybe you feel are too personal. Okay, once we get to the top, I'm actually gonna hairspray the base and everything throughout and do another set of back brushing. So again, I want it to fall back with volume, so I'm gonna pull forward. And don't be afraid, as it starts to fall back, it should have a little bit of lift, but you should also be able to mold it a little bit and get kind of more of the, the tiny bouffant look. See what I did there? We went all the way back. Allie's like, Carly. I think my clients think I just, I talk a lot. Well, no, they don't think it, they're right. But I do enjoy the education portion of having clients. And as long as you do that, you can't go wrong. Again, let's pull 45 degrees forward so that we land on base. Oh my God, is she runway ready or not? <laughs> now we're gonna part her right down the middle. Just kidding, her hair is choosing something different. So if we go to the side, we go to the side. Check that out. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, she's lovely. Well guys, that was the end of the styling portion, but I think we have a few more questions. Is that, am I on there? One more? Would you change these sections or part of these bills definitely? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great question. Okay, the question was, would I change my partings for a special occasion? Uh, yes, I definitely would. So Allie naturally parts right, actually right over here, a little bit further and she goes, she goes diagonal. Um, if it were a case of a wedding and Allie wanted a middle part, heck yeah, Allie would get a middle part. We would probably actually stack that horizontally, so more like you could see the cylinders here rather than having it just in a barrel setting. Um, there is a bunch of different techniques that you can use to get different sections, but the main things you need to pay, it, like, pay attention to and really dive into the study of, chapter seven is a great one, the points of the head. So you have both of the points sitting at the parietal, you have her points sitting at the back of her parietal, you have her crown, you have her apex, and then you have her occipital. So all of these sections are so important, all of these points of the head, because they're gonna tell you how to section appropriately for each client. Um, so while I might have a standard or like a stock way of sectioning, it does change depending on how their head shape is. Um, so yeah. That's, that's how I would answer that. Thanks for the question. All good? Okay, well hey guys, that was the chapter eight webinar, The Artistry of Hairstyling. Thank you for joining me and Allie today to show you what a great blowout looks like, and I hope you learned a few things. Again, I'm Carly Ann, executive, uh, executive educator of Perk Systems, thanks. <laughs>